Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Nativity Online. We are so glad to be with you for our broadcast today. My name is Brian and I am here again with Kelly. Welcome to Nativity Online today. Hey, Brian, it's great to be with you again this weekend and welcome to everyone joining us online. We're thrilled that you're here. At the beginning of our broadcast, we just want to be transparent with everyone again to remind you that in order to maintain all of the guidelines set out by the state of Maryland, portions of our mass were previously recorded. However, the mass itself was recorded in its entirety from beginning to end. That's right. Always maintaining our safe social distancing right now in the midst of this situation. Uh, right at the beginning of our broadcast here, as always, we want to encourage you to do a couple things. First and foremost, we want to connect with you. If this is your first time watching, we'd love to meet you. Uh, join us in the chat. Let us know who you are and where you're tuned in from right now. It's just so great to be able to welcome folks from all around the world uh, in our chat rooms there. So whatever platform you're watching on, let us know who you are today. And probably more importantly, take one second to share this experience. Share on your social media. So you can use the buttons right there on our platform. You can head over to your social media. Take a second to let other people know who are following you in your network that they too can tune in right now to be with us online today. That's right. And another way that you can connect with us right now is through our prayer. We know that everybody is in a different place right now as we continue to navigate through this crisis. And maybe that special supportive prayer is exactly what you might need today. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can get connected to one of our chat hosts online through the prayer request button, or you can go to our website at churchnativity.com and click on prayer request. In either instance, you will get connected to one of our ministers who would love to pray and support you during this time. And if you are watching us maybe for the first time ever today, or you still feel like you're pretty new to our online campus, welcome. Again, we're so glad that you're here. And if it is your first time, you might be curious and want to get some more information about Church of the Nativity. And if that is you, head on over to our website, again, churchnativity.com, and look for the tile that says First Time Visitor. There you can get more information about Nativity. And Brian, we still have a free gift, and this one's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. If this is your first time tuned in today, welcome. We are uh, so glad to be with you uh, online and definitely head over to our website and click on that first time button. You've joined us at a great time as we're in the midst of this really just powerful series possible uh, in this Easter season. It's hard to believe we're already in week four. Uh, it's only a five-week series, so we are nearing the end. If you've been around at all, you know as a church community, we do preach in what we call message series. So for a few weeks, we take a topic and go deeper in it together. We're nearing the end of this message series, but of course, with the end of a series, it always means the beginning of a new one. And we are really excited to be showing you a trailer for our new series, uh, at the end of Mass. So stick around all the way to the end so you can get a sneak peek as well of what's coming up in two weeks when we will be kicking off our series called The Book Club. I am really excited to see that video premiere at the end of today's Mass. So like what Brian said, hang around through the end of Mass when we get to our end notes, and there you will get to see the world premiere of that series trailer for our upcoming series, The Book Club. You know, the beginning of a series is a great time to invite someone to join you for Mass Online. And let's be honest, right now there's probably not a bad time to make that invitation, but at the beginning of a series, it can have even more impact. So you might know right off the top of your head who, exactly who you'd want to invite, and maybe you need to take some time and think about who you might like to extend the invitation to. No matter what the circumstance, we've got some tools to help you make your invitation. Go again to our website at churchnativity.com slash invite. And there you can find some shareable graphics. And if you need some help, maybe writing that text or writing that email, we've got some help for you there too. Lots of tools and lots of things for your entire family to use to invite people online. So again, check it out at churchnativity.com. Yeah, it's been so great hearing stories of people who are using that page, using those tools to extend invitations to family and friends in the season. We heard a story this week actually of Vani from Michigan. She's tuning in 
uh, and watching us this week uh, and as has been throughout this pandemic. And she said that she's just gotten so much hope, so much inspiration and encouragement from our broadcast that she has started hosting a Facebook watch party each week online. And she shared this part of her story with us this week. She said, when I see that so-and-so is watching with you as that pops up on the screen on Facebook, it makes me so happy. It's the community that I long for right now. And I love the comment bar. It makes me feel like we are truly all watching together. As I post my watch party on Facebook, I am also seeing so many friends join me who aren't churchgoers. What an opportunity to open the door for them to revisit their faith at this time. So thanks, Vani, for sharing your story, and thanks uh, for posting, uh, hosting those watch parties on Facebook. Way to go, and we know there are tons of others just like you, so keep those invitations going, guys, and uh, congratulations to Vani and to all of you. Keep it up. Yeah, way to go, Bonnie. You know, you don't have to be intimidated by technology. And especially if you're watching us on Facebook Live right now, all you have to do is click the button that says start a watch party. It's super easy, not intimidating at all. Very easy way to invite the people that follow you on Facebook to join you for today's mass. And, you know, since we've been broadcasting 100% online, we know that a lot of you have been joining our community for the first time or Maybe you've been away for a while from your faith or from the church. And so during your experience, if, if this has been resonating with you and really speaking to your heart, we would like to invite you to consider taking your next step with Church of the Nativity. The word STEPS is actually an acronym for the five ways that you can grow in, in your faith and become a deeper part of our church community. And it doesn't matter if we are quarantined or if we are practicing social distancing you can still take one of those five steps on your faith journey. To get more information about what those steps are, head on over to our website, churchnativity.com, and click on the next steps icon. It's at the top of the page. And there you can get some more information, and you can actually take another step today. Yeah, those uh, steps are things that you can do from wherever you're tuned in from right now, things like small groups that are meeting online. You can even serve from afar, tips and tools on prayer and giving, all sorts of ways that you can still be growing in your faith at this time. Uh, just click on that next steps button there on our website. Uh, and as a church, we are doing our best to just connect, stay connected with you and continue uh, it's all sorts of great content coming at you each week. So make sure you're following us on all of our platforms, on social media, download that Nativity app. And we've also got some exciting news coming up about another opportunity to engage with us during the week that's right around the corner. I am so excited to announce this. And I wish I could tell you all right now, but you're going to have to stick around to EndNotes uh, to find out what that special announcement is. But we'll give you a little bit of a hint right now. If you've been with us for any amount of time, you know how much we love our Nativity House band. And we have a special announcement that will be all about the band and an upcoming event. But in the meantime, if you haven't already done so, check out their brand new album. It just dropped a few weeks ago and you, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, really anywhere you stream or purchase music. And I promise, it's something you might want to listen to before this event. Yeah, that's good. You know, you can access that nativity music, that new music, pretty much on any platform. You can engage with us as a church pretty much on any platform as well. So if you've got a Roku or an Apple TV at home, you know that we have apps there. You can watch us on Facebook Live. And we're also newly on YouTube. So uh, take a second to head over to youtube.com slash Church Nativity. You can subscribe to our channel there uh, and watch live on YouTube. If your TV supports that, that's a great way to tune in and be with us. You can catch up on past messages and past masses there. So you can now follow and subscribe to the Nativity channel on YouTube. You know, Brian, we've actually as a family been watching the weekend broadcast of Mass on YouTube, and it has been a game changer for us. We can all sit in the family room. We can watch it on TV. It is great. So speaking of the online experience with Nativity, if you've been around for the last few weeks, maybe you've heard us talk about Nativity's virtual cafe. The virtual cafe takes place after mass and it's the opportunity for us to just 
hang out and connect with each of you and talk about the mass experience and what you really liked about the message. Well, if you're an introvert, you might even consider joining us today because at the beginning of our virtual cafe, Brian is going to be speaking to a couple of special guests. We are going to have Father Michael and Tom with us in the virtual cafe to talk about today's message and just kind of get a behind the scenes look at how they crafted today's message and what it meant to them. Maybe you'll even hear what got left out of the message and why. So we are going to be back after Mass to give you all of the instructions to get connected to our virtual cafe. But make a note right now, after Mass, you will go to our website, again, churchnativity.com, and just click on the virtual cafe tile. And there you will get more information and instruction on how to join us. We can't wait to see you there. Yeah, we can't wait to see you there. We've been having just a lot of fun after Mass seeing folks each week. Uh, and I am excited for our little behind the scenes conversation with Father Michael and Tom. So definitely join us uh, and plan now to join us for the virtual cafe after Mass today. Uh, as we get ready to get started here, we want to just to encourage you to take a moment to prepare your heart as we begin Mass and our worship and celebration today. Certainly take a moment to turn that volume up so you can sing out and fully engage. Uh, respond to all the responses out loud. Sit and stand at the appropriate times. Just center your heart uh, in a way that you can engage fully because we believe that God has something in store for you today. Thanks so much for being with us for week four of our series, Possible.
fountain I drink from Oh, here is my song And let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, here is my song Cause you are good You're good of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello, and welcome. Welcome to everybody on our online campus, wherever in the world you are today. We continue our celebration of Easter in this fourth week of Easter. To begin, Let's place ourselves confidently before God's mercy. Stay. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Hey parents, we have CN Kids at home resources for your family. Take a moment now to visit churchnativity.com slash kids to check it out. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Me. 
Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show. God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion in my cup, you it is who holds fast to my lot. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to you this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So again, Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might, may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia.
when Jesus died on Good Friday, his friends and followers experienced the end of the world as they had known it with a crushing defeat to all of their hopes and dreams, the upending of what they believed in, of who they believed in. In its place came fear and frustration, doubt and disappointment. For years, they had followed the Lord and been simply amazed by him. They were amazed by his poise and purpose and presence, his message and mission and miracles. They came to believe that he had been sent from God as the long-awaited Messiah and Savior who would change everything. All of this came to a wonderful kind of culmination on Palm Sunday as he rode in triumph through the streets of Jerusalem like a conquering hero. They came to believe that this was their moment when Jesus would be hailed as king and they would form his court. That's what they believed, and they were wrong. All their hopes and dreams crushed on the cross. They couldn't believe what was happening. What do you do? What do you do when you can't believe what's happening? We're in the fourth week of our Easter series and the fourth week of the Easter season. As a church, we continue the celebration of the resurrection of the Lord, though this Easter feels quite different. We live in a very different, a very uncertain time. For sure, we feel fear and frustration in the face of doubt and disappointment, just like those friends and followers of Jesus on the very first Easter. We've been looking at the Easter story beginning with the discovery of the empty tomb by Jesus' friends, Mary, Peter, and John, and the faith that this discovery inspired. Two weeks ago, we looked at the story of Thomas, another friend and follower of Jesus, but one who was much slower, much more reluctant to believe. Faith, we learned, is a gift. It's given by God, and we choose to believe or not. Peter and John, Mary and Thomas were just as incredulous of Jesus' resurrection as modern minds often are. They couldn't believe what was happening, but they didn't do nothing. They deliberately put themselves in a position to recognize what God was doing through this unbelievable situation. That disposes them to the gift of faith. And with faith, they find hope. Faith and hope, we said, always go together. That's the lesson we, we learned last Sunday from another Easter story from the Gospel of Luke. In that Easter story, Jesus revealed himself to his friends in a town called Emmaus. These friends had lost hope, and the risen Lord restores it. We talked about three degrees of hope, casual hope, precious hope, and ultimate hope. And the exercise we looked at last week was making a list of the hopes that we're hoping for in and beyond this crisis. By the way, if you've missed any or all of this series, you can always catch up online. Just go to churchnativity.com slash messages. They're all there, and you can share messages with friends who might need to hear them. Today, I'd like to encourage you with another word of hope when it comes to a very specific hope, perhaps a hope that hasn't made your list yet. We'll take a look. We're looking at a passage from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus, in this passage, is speaking to the Pharisees and the other religious leaders, as he often did. And in his speech, he uses an image that would have been quite commonplace, that would have been quite familiar to them, the image of a shepherd. He also describes a scene that they would have witnessed 
daily in their Mideastern community. Towards evening, shepherds would herd their sheep into an enclosure called a sheepfold, along with other shepherds' flocks. A sheepfold, a sheepfold was an enclosure with stone walls that protected the sheep from thieves and wild animals looking for prey at night. A guard would be stationed at the entrance to the gate to both protect the sheep and keep them in the fold. And then at dawn, the shepherds would return and call their flocks out of the sheepfold. Jesus said, whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him. The sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Each shepherd had his own distinct call, and the sheep knew the sound of their own shepherd's voice. They heard that voice every single day, so they'd become accustomed to it, and they followed that voice. The sheep knew their shepherd, and the shepherds knew their sheep. There are certain voices you know, you recognize, they bring comfort and security. As a child, perhaps, you recognize the voice of your parents, of course. Maybe you can recall a time as a child when you were separated from your parents at a supermarket or, or perhaps the mall. You were scared and frightened and alone, and then you heard the voice of your parent and you knew instantly it would be okay. Now it might be the voice of your spouse or a good friend. When you hear their voice, it brings gladness to your heart. Or it's the feeling of being at a party where you don't know anyone. You feel out of place until you hear the friendly greeting of, of someone you do know. They call out your name. And hearing your name brings relief. It brings gladness to your heart. In fact, it said the sweetest sound you ever hear is the sound of your own name. I remember, and I'll never forget, being introduced to Pope John Paul when I was a student in Rome. And he so graciously greeted me by name. Hearing him use my name, it meant everything to me. Well, Jesus says he knows us by name. He knows us that well. He continues the analogy. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. The shepherd would lead them out of the sheepfold and off to the pastures that they would be grazing in for that day. Different days, they would rotate to different pastures to give the grasses time to grow back. Shepherds would walk ahead of the sheep and lead them to the right pasture. He would make sure they were on the right path to the right pasture. And with his staff, he would ward off potential predators that they might encounter along the way. He goes before them, leading them, to exactly the best place for, for them, where they could feed in peace and security. Did you know, did you know that the Lord walks ahead of you? Did you ever think about that? He knows the path that you're on, the direction that you should take. He knows the mistakes and missteps that you could make, as well as the threats and danger that you might encounter up ahead. He knows the very best place for you, the very best place for the health of your heart and soul and spirit. And he wants to lead you there. He wants to lead you into that future. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the stranger. Sheep are simple creatures for sure. In fact, it can be a criticism to call people sheep as it suggests 
that they can't think for themselves, that they're gullible or easily misled. But actually, none of that is true of sheep. They're very adept at recognizing the voice of their shepherd and what his various calls are instructing them to do. And they cannot be misled by the voice of another. For sure, there are many voices in our lives. There are voices that are supportive and encouraging for the path that we're on, whether or not it's the right path for us. There are voices that are critical, whether or not we deserve the criticism. There are voices of wisdom and voices of folly, voices of good humor and good cheer, and voices of gloom and doom. And then, then there is that voice in our own head, a voice that can often be quite negative. Jesus goes on. A thief comes not only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that they might ha have life and have it more abundantly. There are many voices in our lives. And depending upon how carefully we're listening to those voices, they're influencing us. They're leading us or misleading us. Misleading us or leading us to more successful living or self-defeating patterns of behavior, to life-affirming and enriching relationships or just abusive ones that are filled with distrust and discord, to hope and confidence in the future or just anxiety about it. The wrong voice can be like a thief robbing us of joy, like a thief stealing what is most valuable to us. The wrong voices in our lives can be destructive. They damage and destroy our future. Christ described himself as the good shepherd, the good shepherd who came that we might have life more abundantly, with abundant peace, abundant joy, abundant hope in the future. So, here's the one thing among all our hopes we can hold during this quarantine and beyond it. We can hope to hear the Lord as he goes before us into the future. And I'd like to offer three steps, three simple steps to help make that happen. Nothing terribly insightful or earth shattering, just three basic steps, exactly what you'd expect. Step one, turn down the noise. You need some space to listen to the Lord. You need some silence to listen to him. Maybe that's not a problem for you these days if you're like me and you live alone. We have plenty of silence, like it or not. But for others among you, silence can be in shorter supply than usual these days. It's impossible to hear Jesus if you have all this other noise going on in your life. Because he doesn't talk to us out loud. At least not, not usually, not in my experience. Instead, he speaks to our hearts. The only way you can hear him is by having a quiet time away from texting and technology, away from other voices. Choosing a specific time of day and a specific place are also keys to success. Second step that you can take is ask the Lord to help you hear. We have to want to hear the Lord in our lives. We have to want that enough to ask him to speak to us. The Lord respects our free will and autonomy. He wants to speak to us, but we have to ask him to actually hear him. We have to invite his voice into our lives. If we don't ask, we'll probably hear nothing. Ask the Lord to hear his voice. And if you don't know what else to pray for, make that your prayer. Third step, the key to hearing Jesus' voice is scripture. Scripture is the word of God. And anytime we spend time reading it, even reading it out loud, 
we are hearing the Lord. A good place to get started is the Gospels. The Gospels literally give us Jesus' own words, what he literally said to his friends and followers during his life. In your quiet time, take time, even if only a few minutes a day every day, to read through one of the Gospels. And pay attention to how Jesus addresses people. Imagine the tone of his voice. You really can learn to recognize his voice. Now I know, I know, I know, people will sometimes say to me, prayer doesn't work for me. It's a waste of time for me because God has nothing to say to, to me. It's, it's boring. I feel like I'm talking to myself. My mind wanders. I get it. I've had all of those experiences myself too. But keep at it. It takes time and effort to learn to recognize the voice of the Lord. It's like exercising once and then complaining that you didn't lose any weight. That doesn't work. Prayer is not set it and forget it. It's not once in a while or just when you're desperate. To be successful, to be fruitful, to be rich and enriching, to be enjoyable, it's like anything else. It requires time and effort. But it's worth the time and effort because he alone is the voice that we need to hear. Now, more than ever before, he alone is the voice that can confidently lead us into the successful future he wants for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God hears the prayer of the humble, we turn to him with our needs. For our parish community that we walk through the current crisis with a spirit of faith and not fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, that they have the wisdom to guide our country in the weeks ahead, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are impacted economically by this crisis, especially the unemployed and the poor, that they may find assistance and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare workers and first responders and for all working to heal our broken world, that they have strength for their work, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, for all those who are vulnerable and the homebound, that they may know healing and wholeness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they know light and life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear the prayers of your children. Answer them according to your will, for we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Throughout his work and ministry, Jesus provided care for the suffering, concern for the grieving, and healing for the sick. He made it a priority to serve the marginalized and the needy, revealing God's love for them in the midst of their suffering. At Nativity, we continue the work of our Savior through our member care. Our financial ministry provides counsel and guidance to people struggling to meet their financial burdens. Our healing team prays with and for members who are sick or struggling so that they experience God's healing grace and power. Our pastoral visitors keep the sick and homebound connected and cared for. Our funeral ministers walk with families as they plan for funerals and say goodbye to loved ones. Our grief chat brings consolation to members who are suffering after the loss of a loved one. 
These and other member care services continue digitally every single day as we carry on through our new reality. They are made possible through your financial support. Thank you for helping us care for the suffering, the struggling, the sick, the elderly, and the grieving.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in this mystery, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our joy. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Now every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao. Plene sun celi et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, Lord, the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits so they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, Saint Michael, the Archangel, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On news day, qui tolis peccatum hundi, miserere nobis. On news day, qui tolis peccatum hundi, miserere nobis. On news day, Qui tolis peccatum hundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As far as east is from the west So far your grace has kept me Until I see you face to face Until I last I won my race Remind me you're not finished How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure how great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the Chosen One Bring many sons to Upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him Till it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord our God, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may serve you with the whole of their lives. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hello, everyone. I'm Allie, joined with Tom. And on behalf of Father Michael, thank you so much for joining us online today. We're so glad you could join us for the fourth week of our message series, Possible. Today, we talked about how we can have hope because Jesus is our good shepherd. He goes before us. He goes forward into the future before us to provide provision for us. Our job, our role is to learn to listen to the good shepherd. And so our pastor talked about a few different ways we can do that. Uh, Number one, turn down the noise. Second, ask Jesus to speak to you. And then third, read the scriptures, specifically the gospels, because there we find Jesus's very own words. So read the gospels this week to help you hear the voice of the shepherd. At Church of the Nativity, we present the weekend homilies or messages in series. That means we take a few weeks at a time to dive deeper into a specific theme or topic. It's hard to believe that in just two weeks, we'll be starting our next series called The Book Club. Check this out. Well, we are so excited for that next series, and we promise it's a book club that you will want to be a part of. Anytime is a great time to invite someone to watch Mass online, but the start of a new series has an extra special invite to it. So be thinking about who you want to invite this series. If you need a little help with that invitation, visit our website, churchnativity.com invite. So go to churchnativity.com slash invite to make those invitations. Along with our message series, our music is a key pillar in our weekend experience. We've heard from so many of you how the music has lifted your minds, your hearts, your souls to God during this time. Uh, Right as the crisis was taking place, we had planned a worship night that was going to take place, hopefully to a packed house, but was actually to an empty church uh, because the quarantine had begun. We decided that about this time, it would be good to rebroadcast that worship night, that people need need that kind of jolt to lift their minds and their hearts and their spirits. So we're going to rebroadcast in an encore presentation that worship night. That broadcast will take place this Friday, May 8th at 7 p.m. So mark your calendars now for Friday, May 8th at 7 p.m. We'll be broadcasting Nativity's Worship Night. And this time we'll be dedicating it to all of the frontline workers who are keeping us safe during this quarantine. It'll be available to be watched on any of Nativity's platforms, including Facebook, Apple TV, Roku, YouTube, and our website, churchnativity.com. Visit any of our social media accounts for more information. We'll see you Friday, May 8th at 7 p.m. for that worship night. So Father Michael, got this brand new message series coming, the book club. What book are you reading right now? You, I, I, I usually have two or three going at the same time. Okay. So it's hard. So you're supposed to say the Bible. That's what you're supposed oh, to say. It was a trick question. Was he was setting question. you up. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I definitely I'm reading the Bible. There you go. There you go. Absolutely. What book are you reading? The Bible. There you go. Oh. Okay. You read a lot of books too. Hope you guys have a great week, the coming week. We'll see you next weekend right here. And please remember, we love you very much. And if you'd like, I'll give you a blessing now for the week ahead. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of adoption. Give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of freedom, make you heirs 
to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, be united with him in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really hope to see you on Friday, May 8th for the rebroadcast of our night of worship as we will be connecting with the Lord in worship and prayer that night. Mark your calendars and we hope to see you online that night. But for right now, we'd love to connect with you in our virtual cafe. So head to churchnativity.com slash virtual cafe. We're going to kick that off in just a few moments. So head over there now. Uh, and we will see you for some fun and fellowship and a behind the scenes peek of today's message with our pastor, Father Michael and Tom. So thanks for tuning in today. And we look forward to seeing you back here next week. <laughs>